of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Linda Brenner, and I am going to be doing the bioidenticals. I have been a holistic educator for over 20 years, and I taught bioidentical hormones for over 15 years, all through the United States and uh, in Canada. Uh, I am not a nurse. I am not a doctor, I am a researcher. My husband is in the medical field and I always joke and say yes, I do sleep with him, but osmosis does not occur. <laughs> but um, because of personal experiences that I had, it led me to really discover a whole lot of things that completely changed my life as far as hormones go. So we'll let everybody get situated and we'll get started. So I have to tell you, having taught this for years and years, this is the first time I have ever talked to a group that has, is almost all menopausal or andropause. So I taught young girls. Um, I taught women in their 20s, you know, worked through pregnancies and miscarriages and, you know, did a whole lot of stuff in that arena. So this is the first time I'm really kind of talking to one group that is this age. So I'm going to start off with a few notes just to keep on track because otherwise it's really easy for me to, you know, kind of get off on something. And then, um, and this won't be too long. And then I have some really good resources for you if you're interested. When I started to decline in my hormones, this was something that my mother did not talk about. This was something that frankly was kind of a mystery. Um, if you talk to even your physician, you would get very, very gentle information, and a lot of you know that because I have a lot of nurses here. Um, and you know, you just you would get more from information from your nurses than you ever did, usually your physician. So I really did not know what to expect. For me, it was an absolute disaster because I had a hysterectomy at 47. I was told it was necessary. And of course, what I found out was it was not necessary at all. I actually had a fibroid tumor. They're almost never cancerous. And, but he said all the right things. He said, well, you don't want more children. Okay, I was 47. I had five children in seven years. That was a pretty much, no, I do not want more children. And you had a terrible problem with your menses. Um, you know, heavy bleeding and clotting and uh, horrid cramps all my life. So I had all these negative things. And he goes, we'll just take it out and this will be wonderful and you're going to feel great. I did not know how my body worked. I took his word for it. And I'll be honest with you, it's one of the biggest mistakes that I ever made. Because I didn't know what questions to ask. He was saying all the right things. What he didn't tell me, he said, you know, your father has heart issues. So, you know, this is going to be really good. We're going to put you on some stuff that's going to really help protect your heart. And so, okay, that sounded pretty good, too. What he didn't tell me is that I actually increased my risk for heart disease by having a hysterectomy, especially at 47. I didn't know that. Nor did I know that I had a very high, over 55% chance of having my gallbladder out within two years at that age of having a hysterectomy. Mine was out in 25 months. So it was not um, something I expected. I wasn't really told that. It wasn't until later until I got into the research. I also didn't understand that the pill at the time he was going to give me, which was called Premarin, increased not only my risk for heart disease, it increased significantly my risk for female cancer. The Women's Health Initiative was not canceled until 2002, and I had had my hysterectomy several years before that. So in 2002, the Women's Health Initiative, which is one of the biggest researches for women, literally stopped because they were seeing an absolute increase of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, cervical cancer, and so they literally had to stop it. I gained 60 pounds in nine months. I had never, ever had a weight problem. I had five children in seven years. People used to say, oh, it's disgusting. You know, she's five kids and she's, you know, I was like, when I had my hysterectomy, I was 12 pounds over what I weighed in high school. Mm -hmm. I, I had never had an issue with my weight. And, no, and I didn't change my diet. I couldn't stop putting on the weight. 
So when I went back to the doctor, I said, oh my gosh, this is like a nightmare. And every woman in here understands, if you gain a lot of weight, what does that do depression-wise and, and emotionally to you? I mean, that's very tough. And he said, oh, you can't go off of it. You absolutely can't go off of it. He said, it's a risk for heart. And of course, research has shown that's absolutely not true. It's really the opposite. Um, and back then, they weren't paying as much attention to the research, especially in Europe. Uh, in Europe, they knew all of this a long time ago. And so, needless to say, I had all kinds of health issues I had never had. My health was stellar up until I was 47, and it was just like one thing after another. I became insulin resistant, then I ended up with metabolic syndrome, and the weight just kept coming on, and it was just on and on and on. And that's when I started to do research. I kept thinking, you know what? There has to be a better answer than this. This is just absolutely ridiculous. And so I really started doing research. I used a lot of my husband's credentials to get in and look at all the research. And I realized, oh my gosh, there is a much better answer. And what we're gonna be talking, one of the things tonight is the difference between hormone replacement therapy, which is chemicals, and the difference between bioidenticals which is molecularly exactly the same as your body. That not only does not have risk for cancer um, and other side effects, but actually has a lot of protective, um, a lot of protective things that are really going to help you. So, you know, it's no wonder that our generation has all moved to the villages. Because you think of menopause, and the minute you talk to anybody, especially your physician, it's like, well, you know, you're kind of all dried up, and you know, you have all these symptoms, hot flashes. Some of you maybe are really lucky and you didn't have many, and some of you really suffer. My sister-in-law is 72. She's a sister-in-law. We're the same age, because I'm 72. She still has hot flashes. And her doctor still insists that she cannot use some of the things that um, I'm going to recommend to you. He's wrong, but you know she's got to do what she feels is right. So here she is, 72, and you know I was with her. She went on the trip, and you know we're in the car, and all of a sudden the fan is coming out. Well, hers is electric because she gets serious, serious hot flashes, and she starts sweating literally, you know, down her face. So. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that, and I love what um, my husband always says. You know, he's like, men really just do not quite understand menopause. Um, this change comes over, and most men have no idea what to expect. Um, and I think that um, probably Su Suzanne Summers says it the best, because she talks about the seven little dwarfs of menopause. And I could totally relate that when I read her book, which was years later. Itchy, bitchy, sleepy, sweaty, bloated, and forgetful. Mm -hmm. And if you've been in menopause and you don't have any of those, you are blessed. But I can guarantee you that most of us have gone through either some or all of those. Now, these symptoms, this is not about complaining. You know what, my mother, they just just kind of dealt with it, they didn't talk about it, um, and they just kept hoping it would pass. And I've heard so many people say, well, I think I'm through menopause now, I'm, I'm past menopause. Nobody is past menopause, unless you're dead. Because menopause doesn't stop as long as you're alive. You continue to decline slowly and slowly and slowly, unless you are gonna supplement your body with what it actually needs to slow down that process. Um, for men, most of you can recognize exactly what those symptoms are. You can see that all of a sudden, and um, I've seen it with family, I've seen it with friends, all of a sudden, um, wow, she used to be really nice. Have you noticed she has, doesn't have any patience anymore? Or you can literally cry at the drop of a hat, you don't even know why angry outbursts. You know what was the hardest for me? Because I have 13 grandchildren. I found I didn't have a lot of patience. And that's not something I've ever experienced with uh, grandchildren.
grandchildren before. But that was a really big thing is that I would just get irritated so, so easily and just not have the patience. So let's talk just a little bit about, I'm not going to go into a lot of technical stuff, but you need to know a little bit how these hormones actually work in your body. So you have what I call the three girls. You have E1, E2, and E3. Basically, E1 is estrone. That's the one that worries the most for me and should be for you because that's the one that is the most likely to cause any female cancer in your body. Then you have E2, which is estradiol. A lot safer, needs to be in control, but it still is a lot safer, and also has some pretty good heart and some other benefits. And then you have E3, which, to be honest with you, most physicians completely ignore because that is the hormone that you produce the most when you're pregnant. So a lot of times they think estriol, E3, don't need that, you're not gonna have a baby, you're not in that cycle, you're not in that you know, particular period, so it's not necessary. And they are completely wrong, because it's the only estrogen that does not cause cancer. So what do these, these three hormones do, these three estrogens do? By the way, you men have them too. You just have very small amounts of them, where ours are very predominant. So what do they actually do, in a nutshell? They create cellular proliferation. Well, that sounds like a pretty big word, but it's really pretty simple. What they do is they cause cells to grow very, very quickly, okay? Now, that's good if you're 13, because it is those estrogens that take that precious little child or grandchild you have that's 12 years old and she gets into uh, puberty, you know, at 12 or 13, and oh my. Gosh, it's, it totally explains why some animals eat their children, you know, because, I mean, you are, I think I'm kidding, but you've all seen it. They get mean. I mean, how many times have you seen a very sweet child and they turn around and they get mean and smart alecky, and one minute they're laughing and acting very adult and mature, and the next minute they're acting like they're six, you know, years old, and their hormones are up and down and up and down. Well, what's actually happening is that the one hormone, which is called progesterone, which balances the girls, the three girls, if those are in balance, you do not have that up and down and up and down surge in hormones. But what happens is, in order for little girls to develop their breasts and their ovaries and their uterus and all their feminine parts, you have to have a lot of surge of estrogen. A lot of surge, because that's what's actually developing Womanhood. Men, you're not any exception. It's the same thing. I can remember when my boys, you know, were hitting that age and you think, oh my gosh. In fact, my uh, second oldest son just turned 50 and um, I, when we were out in Austin, Texas, I gave him a t-shirt, one of his birthday gifts, with a big wooden spoon on it and it said, wooden spoon survivor. <laughs> because if he mouthed me one more time, <laughs> He got the wooden spoon, and I am ashamed to say, I did snap it over his back. I was so aggravated at him because he was just in that, you know, just in that mood thing. And if you've ever, any teachers in here, if you've ever worked with junior high, you really see it pretty heavy. A little better in high school, but it's pretty heavy in junior high. So estrogen is what's creating cellular proliferation, and it's going to really develop, and that happens both in boys and in girls. Now, in order for that to really be effective, the balancer, which is progesterone, has to kind of sit in the back seat, you know, maybe drink a little Mai Tai, not be a big part of anything, because it's got to let the estrogen really do its job. Does anybody here ever have a boat or ever drove a boat? Anybody? A few of you? Okay. So the best way to explain progesterone is what it does is it stops the cellular growth when it's supposed to. So if you have a boat, the first time we had a boat, my husband built a pontoon boat, I'm out on the lake, I'm getting a little too close to the dock, and I'm like, uh, so where are the brakes? <laughs> well, he didn't tell me that boats don't have brakes. So it was, not a, it was not a good moment, trust me. It was not good at all. Um, I'm sure they thought I was probably had way too much to drink, right? And so um, you've got to have something that stops that cellular proliferation. If you don't, you are at a high risk for cancer.
because come on nurses, you know what I'm talking about. What is unstopped cellular proliferation? It's cancer, that's right. So progesterone is a huge, huge part and that never stops. Never, never, never stops. Now most of the time you're a physician, is it warm in here or is it me? It's warm. Because I never get hot flashes. I'm like, oh, really I'll really go warm. see if I can get it. Um, so most of the time, what really happens is um, progesterone, every cell has a, a literally a program where it's supposed to stop. If it doesn't stop, that's where female cancer really comes in, and it can be a real issue. So progesterone is what says, stop. Your job is done, it's over. If you don't have that, those cells can keep growing and growing and growing and growing, and it takes years because it's one cell at a time, gets into tissue, then can get into an organ and you never know what hits you at all. And of course, some female cancer is very scary. I'm sure most of you know that uh, ovarian cancer to me is the very scariest. Do you know why? They don't have symptoms. And by the time they find it, often it's just too late to do anything. Uterine cancer, yes, you'll get some symptoms with that. Breast cancer, yes, a lot of times you can feel a lump or you'll have real uncomfortableness. You know, lots of things you can feel, but with ovarian cancer, you just most of the time absolutely don't know until it's actually diagnosed. So progesterone is important. So here's your estrogens, and here's your progesterone, and they do this little hormone dance up and down. They don't stand still. They move during the day, but as long as they're doing this, you are not going to have all the things like when you were younger, endometriosis, you're not going to have fibroid tumors, you're not going to have fibrocystic breasts because the breasts are really tender and, and really sore. And that's not the problem as far as cancer with fibrocystic breasts. It's that MRIs and when they're doing your uh, mammograms, they can completely block and they can't even see cancer. So now we're getting into 3Ds, which are so much better. But heck, 10 years ago, that could be a real crisis if somebody had very heavy, even at our age, fibrocystic breasts. So you want that balance. You want the estrogens to do their job but you want them to stop when they stop doing it. And that's the same for men, and we're gonna get into that. Men are just, their hormones are a lot more simple than women's, women's are just a little more complicated, and every man in here probably can agree with that, and <laughs> kinda of has a good feeling of that. So that's what those hormones do. Now, women don't often think about having testosterone. But testosterone is also very, very important. Men have very high amounts of it, that's your highest. Ours is not but it's absolutely crucial for us in multiple things. Actually, progesterone, what I call the brakes, and testosterone are what really keep your bones really in good shape. Not any of you want osteoporosis. It's a real problem. And the biggest thing with osteoporosis that I find most women don't know is how many times do you have you heard somebody say, I fell and broke a bone? Did you know that that's almost never true? Do you know it's the opposite? The bone breaks and you fall. It's not the other way around. So for us, one of our very main concerns is that we really keep our bones strong. Now, what the medical community told me years ago is, oh no, estrogen's important. Estrogen slows down osteoporosis. No, it does not. That's absolutely not correct. And I'm gonna explain it because I think this is important. And it's true with men, that's why you really want that testosterone because it does the same thing for you. It helps to keep those bones and your muscles uh, mass really strong. What actually happens is that um, estrogen, you have two things going. Anybody in here remember Pac-Man? Okay, if you remember Pac-Man, that's the easiest way to explain it. So you have osteoblasts, okay, like little Pac-Man. And what osteoblasts do is they build your bone up, which is wonderful. But guess what happens is at the same time the bone is being built up, you have osteoclasts. And these osteoclasts literally eat down the old bone because the old bone has to go, new bone has to come up, and you have new bone every seven years. So seven years ago, there's no bones in your body that you did not have before. And those need to be in harmony. How many of you know that it could be a problem if you slow down the osteoclast that's eating the bone, which is what estrogen does, slow it down, what else is gonna be slowed down? Osteoblasts, building it back up. So what the research showed in five years, yes, it did slow 
slow down bone mass. It never told you what the quality was of that bone. Who cares if it's slowing down if you have really poor quality? Because if it's slowing down the osteoclast, guess what? It's also slowing down all the new bone. And in five years, you have absolutely no benefit whatsoever with somebody who had none at all. And I think that's something, especially in our age, that we need to know. Where progesterone actually stimulates osteoblasts. So progesterone is great for your bones, along with testosterone, which does the same thing. Build the bone up a little bit faster. The old comes down faster, but they're in perfect harmony. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's really kind of important to know. It makes a whole lot of sense. If your doctor talks to you about, oh, you have you know, osteoporosis or you have osteopenia, if they tell you you have osteopenia, it means you're starting to lose bone mass. You're not over that line into osteoporosis, but it's a problem. So um, hormones play a major, major, major player in your bones and in your body mass and in your muscles and in your fat. Whether you're a man or whether you're a woman, it makes no difference. They do the same thing. So testosterone is also important not only for your bones, it's very important for your brain as is progesterone. So both progesterone and testosterone are really important for your brain. Here's where we have run into problems. You should not be low in estrogens, healthy estrogens, and you shouldn't be low in testosterone, and you shouldn't be low in progesterone, whether you're a man or a woman. But we have some real environmental issues that have absolutely, literally changed the game when it comes to health with that. So how many of you know with our polluted rivers and with all the chemicals and everything that we're using, um, it really has affected us. And what happens, for example, I've always been paranoid. Um, I was a licensed massage therapist and esthetician. I was European trained. And we learned over there years and years and years ago, never use mineral oil on your body unless you're burned. You know, if you're, on your, if you're burned, you have to use mineral oil because you want to prevent air from getting to that burn. But mineral oil is actually a very high petroleum product. And guess what? You have these little receptors in your body. So you get something in there and it looks so close to actually what estrogen does that it can get in, lock itself in the receptor. Now, the real one comes along and can't even get in because there's already a fake est uh, estrogen in there. And what happens is then it's going to do, that, that little DNA program in the cell is going to be part of the program, not all of it, and you'll start to have lots and lots of issues. And the more that happens, so I don't ever use mineral oil, I don't use, if you come to my house, you're not going to find chemicals in my house. I use everything that's natural. Do I need to say anything about Roundup? Okay, I mean, we knew about Roundup 30 years ago. The research was out there, absolutely out there. Europe hasn't used it for a long, 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 long time. Um, also, one of the things that's really affected women more than men is that a lot of women were given chemical hormones. Well, guess what? They don't match what's in your body. For example, Tremor, that was the number one, um, by the way, it was the third uh, biggest drug at the time uh, that was used was Tremor for women. Now, does everybody in here know about Tremor? I won't go into it if you don't know. But Tremor actually comes from horses who have way more estrogens than men you do. And they are not compatible to your estrogens. And the way they get them is, and I know because I went undercover, because I don't think anybody's word for anything, I went to a primary farm. And I actually saw myself what happened. And what they do is they take a mare, they pregnate it, they tie them in a stall so they can't hardly move, they cut their water in half, because they need to keep the, and they pregnate them, of course, and then they keep the urine as strong as they can so that by concentrating it, then it was way more marketable then, and that's what they were giving us. That's what I was taking was, was primary. And of course, it does increase your risk for cancer. Of course, we all know that because in 2002, most of you, if you're on Premier, your world was turned upside down because all of a sudden it was in the papers and they were saying, no, you can't 
do that. It you know, causes cancer. And so then what happened was women would go off the Premarin. Oh my gosh. I know because I was working with hormones at that time. And I'm telling you, there were a lot of women that were going crazy because you can't just stop it cold turkey most of the time. It has a lot of effects. And what happens is you can have so many hot flashes and so many night sweats and so much mood swings, they'll go back on it because they cannot deal with it. How sad, because bioidenticals would have completely taken care of everything. So I'm not big on chemical hormone replacement therapy, which is HRT. We still have a lot of doctors, not like it used to be, but we still have a lot of doctors who still prescribe what they call more natural. If they say the word natural hormone replacement therapy, you need to ask some questions. What exactly do you mean by natural? Is that bioidentical to what your body makes? What does that mean, bioidentical? It means the molecule is identical to what your body makes. Now that's huge. Because if it's identical, your body cannot tell the difference between that product, that, that uh, steroid, and that what the body actually makes itself. So you don't have the side effects. Now, you can't play with those. Most of them are prescription. Progesterone is the only one that isn't. Testosterone and the estrogens um, are prescription, and progesterone isn't. So I'm going to give you two different scenarios of things you can try, depending on what your budget is. Unfortunately for us, no, Medicare will not pay for bioidentical hormones. They will pay for the chemicals. I had an OBGYN tell me to my face that, of course, um, I am absolutely, and he was a gynecologist too, and he said, of course, he said, I know that when I give you hormones, I'll have you for life because then you're going to start to get depressed and then you're going to need an antidepressant within two years. He said, it's just the way it works. And I had to walk out to not hurt him. I was appalled. I mean, I couldn't even believe that he actually verbalized that to me because <coughs> it, it really creates a lot of problems. Yes? How long has Premarin been on the market for going out to women in menopause? Late 40s. Late 40s is when it first came out. It became more popular in the 50s. Birth control pills are another issue. I don't know about, about all of you, but I was on birth control pills a short period of time, and they really play havoc very early in your health if you're on birth control pills very long. And the story on birth controls is really pretty scary. 36 Puerto Rican women were on it for two years before they released it in the 60s because everybody wanted effective birth control, right? With our generation, they released it. Out of the 36, six died, and they have all kinds of side effects. They, the book, A Bitter Pill, is not even in print anymore. I actually have the book, but it was literally taken out because it literally came from one of the researchers who literally quit that particular research because of what she actually saw. So in the 60s, when we were given birth control pills, they were way, way higher than what they should have been. Now, if you have a genetic disposition toward cancer, this is not a good thing. And the longer you're on them, the higher your risk as you go on. Remember, cancer can be in your body 20 years before you actually can see it show up. You know, there's some cancers that are very, very, very slow. So it can be in your body a long, long time. Um, if anybody in here was in depo, you need to be really checking your hormone levels carefully because depo was one of my first. As an esthetician, I knew what depo was immediately because all of a sudden I had women coming in with these huge cysts like, um, like you think it was a pimple. They hurt, they were really sore, and they'd be right down here on the jawline. And I couldn't figure out skin care -wise. What in the world is causing this? I hadn't seen it before, and now all of a sudden I'm, I'm kind of seeing it a little more and a little more. Depo is a birth control pill shot. And so when they give it to you, they tell you it's to prevent cancer. If anybody here is pro-life, then you also need to know that it aborts. And so that's kind of important if that's an issue for you. But what it does is it changes your body's 
a whole hormone entire system dramatically. So if you have a grandchild that you don't ever want to have children, put her on Depo. I have a very good chance that she'll end up with PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, or she will not be able to conceive if she's been on it very long. It affects it long term that much. I have a niece that is exactly in that position. And I warned her mom, and her mom went, this is what the doctor said, and he said this was good, and here she is, um, just celebrated her 50th birthday and has always wanted a child and cannot because she's severe PCOS from the get-go. So, you know, understanding your body is important, and it is important for men. Men are not as upfront about things as much as women. But you know what I want more than anything? I want when you go to your health care provider, if you can just understand some of the things I've talked about today, you can ask some good questions. I didn't know what to ask. I had a hysterectomy. I thought, well, this would be good. No more periods, right? That sounds pretty cool. And I had no idea that it was going to be years and years of getting my body back into balance again. I had no idea. So I always say, how do you know you have a really good um, gynecologist? Because at this stage, you do not have obstetricians. Mm -hmm. So how do you know? It better be a dialogue. What does that mean? This better be a dialogue between you and your physician. He needs to listen to you, and he needs to honor what you're saying. And if he doesn't do bioidentical hormones, and he hasn't, or he goes, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, he can write a script. That's not enough. You don't have any idea where your hormones are. How many of you women in here really believe one pill will do it? Do you really believe that? That's not going to work. One pill, every one of you sitting here, you're all, every one of us, our hormones are different. So I have blood tests to see exactly where my levels are. Now, let's talk about that from a vanity standpoint. You want your skin to look great? You need to have a balance of hormones because it has a huge impact on how good your skin looks, how good your hair looks how great you feel. But until you know you've got a really good balance, you're playing a game that you have no business playing because you really don't quite understand. Now, I'm going to give you one exception that you can do if you're on a really tight budget because I will not, but I would make sure you have no E1 estrone. Um, all you need is a small amount of estradiol and estriol and he'll probably, unless he, unless, and I've got some, some um, contacts here that are really good, and unless he really has been doing this a while, he's going to go, you, you know, you don't need E3, you don't need e estriol, let me explain to you, you know, it's really high when you're in pregnancy. All right, so let's talk common sense here. If estriol is your highest estrogen in pregnancy, how safe do you think it is? You're carrying a fetus for nine months, and you're super high in estriol, it's pretty flippin' gone gone safe. And not only that, it is going to help with vaginal dryness. It is going to help with the skin. It is going to, when you're pregnant, how good does your skin look? How good does your hair look? Would you like to know why? Two particular hormones. Progesterone is very high and a whole lot. As a matter of fact, um, some of you have kids who maybe are just now having kids who are pregnant, so I'll just throw this in because it's kind of nice to know. You need to be pretty doggone high in your progesterone when you're pregnant because what progesterone does, it's an, called an antispasmodic. So when that fetus, when that egg is attached to the wall of the uterus, if you don't have really good amounts of progesterone, the uterus is going to start to do what? It's going to contract and you're going to miscarry. That's what 90% of the miscarriages are. I can remember the first time I had a miscarriage, and he went, well, you know, it's kind of God's will. There's probably something wrong with it. And I can remember even at a young age going, there's a lot of people out here that have, that are, that, how come they didn't miscarry? You know, when you look at all the issues and things, the babies that were born, that made no sense to me whatsoever. Yes, that can happen, but most of the time it's because you're too low in progesterone. So it can attach, but it can't stay on because the day that egg attaches to your wall, you double the amount of progesterone, literally. And you all know this, because if any of you have children, what happened the second month of your pregnancy? Oh my gosh, you couldn't stay away. You were like so <laughs> tired. Are you going to be three o'clock in the afternoon and you're hitting, hitting, the, hitting the desk? And that's because progesterone is produced at such a high amount the first three months 
your body hasn't quite acclimated to the huge amount. Want to know how important it is? What's the first things that are developed in the body the first three months? How about your heart? How about your lungs? How about your brain? You want to take and have a break. If you've got, you're low in progesterone, but you have enough in your body to keep the egg on, right? But you're still low. So it's, it's still on, but it's low. Then you have a very high chance of having attention deficit disorder with your children. Your children can also have lung issues uh, and allergies, and it can affect the brain. So, you know, that's pretty significant. You want high amounts of progesterone, but it can't, that's what it does, makes you sleepy. Get into your third month, most of the time after the third month, the nausea is gone, and that's because your um, ovaries are no longer making the hormones. It's now your adrenal glands and other glands that are really working in there, and they can produce a lot more. Then what happens when you get to the ninth month? This is a big baby to keep on the uterine wall, right? We can all agree. Uh, my babies weren't too big, but you know, some people have eight, nine, 10 pound babies. Mm -hmm. You're producing 400 milligrams a day. 400 milligrams. How safe do you think progesterone is to your body? If you're producing 400 milligrams a day and the average amount when you're not pregnant is only 20. Is that a safe hormone? Well, I, I think it probably is if you have a fetus in there and you're producing that much. What actually starts labor? Most people don't know nurses all know in here, guess what? Progesterone stops just like that. Uterus starts to contract, and that's what labor is. One of the biggest things that I did when I worked with young women was I worked with post-depression. That, that post-pregnancy um, was such a huge problem because if that progesterone does not start coming back up, you can be so depressed. If you're low in progesterone, I can tell you right now, you may feel like you are lower than the ozone from mouse. I'm here to tell you. It really, it affects your moods tremendously. So why do I do bioidentical hormones? Because I do want to look good. I'm not vain, but I don't want to look 72. I want to look good, but you know what's even more important? I want to feel good. I want to have energy. I want to know my bones are strong. I want to know I'm doing every single thing I can to keep my health as good as it can be. Isn't that why we all moved here? We did not move here to shrivel up and die. We moved here because we wanted to stay active, we wanted to be healthy, we wanted these last years of our life to be as healthy as possible. Now we have neglected the three men in the room, not counting Carl. It's not that you're not a man, he's probably just heard these things before. So I don't want to neglect this everything. But here's what's nice. We actually work with a, um, a Beamer, which is a European medical device. For any of you in here that have the Beamer, here's what's an interesting thing. Everything you do is absorbed because your circulation is increased to normal. So what happened was the first time I was on bioidentical hormones, and then when I got a Beamer and I had my next test, he went, oh, I'm not quite sure I got that right. We have to lower your hormones. And then uh, six months later, when I went back and had my next blood test, he went, oh my gosh, you know, you never see anybody at your age. You know, I hate it when they say, at your age. And so they lowered it again because I'm actually absorbing not only my food, because I actually have tests done that tell me how well I'm absorbing my vitamins and where I'm at, and, but it also helps you with your hormones too. And even having great circulation is plays a major, major um, player in circulation also, so it's important. Testosterone, you need it bioidentical, it makes a huge difference. I bet you there's not one neighborhood in the villages that does not have more than one. Because the older men get, the grumpier they get, they will have homework. Not everybody. Okay, if you're sitting there going, that's not me. That's not me. I can probably say, yes, it is. You <laughs> know, so my, my husband, he, he doesn't have near the patience with the, with the younger grandchildren he used to have. He just doesn't have the patience. He's just, you know, he's just a lot grumpier. And he went, I don't need testosterone. This is a medical person, okay? I don't need testosterone. I'm like, yeah, well, you weren't ever taught anything. That's why you don't think you need it. And so he was like, no, I don't need it. Well, I had a really good friend who was a PA who wrote a prescription, 
And so he'd go to sleep and I'd rub it on him. And he would transfer him. I'm like, he may say he doesn't want it, but by golly, I have to live with it. And all of a sudden, he was like a lot feistier than what he had been. And he stopped losing muscle mass. And he had more energy. And he goes, you know, I'm, I'm really feeling a lot better. And I, I think probably it was maybe four or five months before I broke down and said, well, of course you do. <laughs> he goes to sleep at night. He doesn't wake up at all. I just slap it on him and, you know, he's doing a lot better. I probably don't need it. Um, so, you know, with men, here are some of the symptoms, typical symptoms, because men do go through what's called antipodes, which is like men's medical. Um, and here are some of the symptoms. Fatigue, low energy, depression, that's a huge one. Uh, irritability, anxiety, loss of memory or concentration, relationship problems due to irritability and anxiety, decreased intensity of orgasms, back pain, joint pain, stiffness, loss of physical fitness, muscle tissue, and feeling overstressed for no reason. Very similar to what women do, what, what women have. Um, testosterone's not expensive, it's a lot simpler, it's less expensive because normally, normally we are all too high in estrogen. And that's what starts to be the problem, especially when it comes to uh, female cancer or male cancer is the same way. So if your estrogens are up here, okay, which create that cellular proliferation, and your progesterone or testosterone is down here, how many of you realize you've got a problem? You're out of balance. And sooner or later, you're going to have issues. What are those issues? I don't know. You know, this guy over here seems so nice. Maybe he just has a few little things, not very much. And, you know, then there's my husband who was becoming a curmudgeon. Oh, gosh. Just, you know, very irritable and became very short and you know just no patience whatsoever and had some real brain fog which would really scare you if you were his patient <laughs> um, which I pointed out to him which did not go over well okay um, so bioidenticals what you have to do is the first thing is I'll, I'll tell you the real easy one if you're on a really tight budget and you really just do not have the um, flexibility of going in and, you know, now most of the time Medicare will pay for your hormones. If you've got a good physician, they know how to get that test covered. And then, and, and that's important. How can you supplement if you don't know where you are? You and I, you can't give us the same thing. This isn't like a one thing, a one pellet, you know, fits all, or, you know, you can do it transdermal, you can do it under your tongue, sublingual. Um, you have no idea, so you have to know where you're at, and then they have to adjust exactly where you are and then they have to check it they check mine um i might have checked like every three months because i want to know exactly where my hormones are especially because i use the beamer and it keeps getting like a little bit better and better and better i don't want to overtake anything so i do have mine checked more often so that i know exactly where they are and then they adjust it uh, mine lasts for six months so usually i have um and, and i'll tell you my last um labs were absolutely stellar, just absolutely stellar. He told me that my labs look like a 45, maybe 50 year old, um, which is really nice because most of the time I hear at your age. <laughs> so um, you can try progesterone cream. It is over the counter. If you come up and talk to me, I will tell you, get it at Amazon. I have researched it. I can tell you the best price with the highest quality can't just go into a store and think you can buy a jar of progesterone cream because it's very sensitive to oxygen. So you open that lid and it's good for a little while and you get down in the middle of the jar and you go, oh, this, this is stupid, this doesn't work at all. Well, no, it's because it's oxidized. It has to be in a container that cannot have light or oxygen cannot get to it. And you want a USP, which means United States Pharmaceutical, which means they're literally going to check to make sure every pump is exactly what they tell you it is. Like if it's 20 milligrams every pump, you want to know exactly what you're getting. Also, I keep it, even though I take progesterone, I still have extra progesterone at my house in a pump. Why do I have that? How many of you know that all of us can come across something extremely stressful? Um, with some of you, it's watching the stock market or watching the news on television, or it can be 
um, something you're really worried about health-wise. We all deal and have stress come in our life. We can't avoid that. And progesterone is one of the most wonderful things. It's like nature's value. So three years ago, I lost my 44-year-old daughter. She had a pulmonary embolism and was dead in 30 minutes. And uh, do I have to tell you what my stress level was? So fortunately, I knew what I had to do. And I ordered a second bottle of progesterone, and I was, I was taking 100 milligrams a day because I didn't want to take value. I didn't want an antidepressant. And I don't have to tell you that emotionally losing a child is not something that anybody ever wants to have to go through. And it really, I'm very strong in my faith. So between my prayers and my faith and the progesterone, you know, I was, that doesn't mean you, it's easy to lose a child, but on my body, it was a lot easier to be able to cope with the stress and to be able to work that out. So if you have something that's really stressful, you hear your, your mom who, you know, lives far away and she's had a heart attack and you can't get there and, you know, you don't know what's going on. I like keeping it on hand because anytime I have something stressful and it is so safe, you go, yeah, but aren't you worried about using too much? FDA has said the only side effect of progesterone, which is why it's not a prescription, is you get too tired. If your body can't metabolize it enough, you're just going to get sleepy. I'm not sure that's so bad. You know, at our age, we can use all the sleep we can get sometimes, right? So it's a very safe way to do it. Also, if you're a very anxious person, progesterone is really nice. Yes, I have put progesterone on my husband when he is sleeping uh, at times. Um, because you know what, I mean, it's like, I don't need anything. I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay, if it's said like that, you know that's just not, that's not true. So if you want to come up, um, I have it on my phone. I can send you a picture of it. I get it at Amazon. It's $18, I think, and 99 cents. I could be off a little tiny bit, and it'll last you a couple of months. Um, so if you have no budget and you want to do something or you want to start somewhere, that is actually one place safely that you can start. Because unless you're tiny and have zero body fat, uh, like if you're organic and you have, you just don't have any excess body fat and you don't drink and you don't smoke and you have a super healthy, healthy life, then you are probably gonna be estrogen dominant just because of the environment. Every 10 pounds you have, what do you think causes that? Have you ever noticed how your fat like becomes friends with its neighbor cells, doesn't want to leave, it wants to stay there forever, especially in the middle. So how do you know if you're estrogen dominant? I'll tell you right now, it's either one of two things or a combination. You're either eating wheat, which gives you a wheat belly, or you have too much estrogen. And that's where you see, unless you drink a lot of beer, that's what you see with a lot of men who have these big stomachs. And also with us, if your stomach is not as flat, this is where estrogen it collects in your fat cells. And then guess what happens? Your doggone fat cells make more estrogen. So then it makes your estrogens too high. So weight is a real issue, whether you're a man or whether you're a woman. And if you get your estrogen up here, the only way you can quickly get it back in balance is with progesterone and bringing it up. For men, testosterone is really important, but progesterone does help. But a little more effective for women. So. Um, I think I probably hit it all because I bored you all to death with all your, all your hormones. But I'm hoping I just gave you enough information that maybe I'm, I'm going to open up for questions. Just giving you enough information. The other is you need to go. I have, um, this happens to be where I go. It's a holistic medical practice. We all call him Dr. K because we're not great at enunciating his last name. But I happen to use uh, Greta Ellis who is um, she is, I have her card here. I love her because she listens to me. She understands it. Um, I, I like women better than men because men do not have my body parts. I do not use a car mechanic who does not have a car. And I don't particularly like using a gynecologist who doesn't have my parts. So I like using a woman and Greta is wonderful. She does the test. She gives you all the options. Um, she really explains things to you and that's important. I don't want somebody just to treat you like, okay, we'll just give you that. I'll just write you a script for it. No, no, no. You want to know. You want somebody who's had experience, knows what they're doing, and has had the training. So I have both brochures for the clinic. I have her cards 
here if anybody's interested. And there are other physicians. You, your physician may do bioidenticals. That's possible. So that just is kind of all of it, a little bit of a nutshell. I hope I've given you a, enough information that just because you think you're in your senior years, you don't need hormones, you want to make sure. You need to have them checked. And maybe you're lucky. And maybe yours are really balanced. If they're not, it's not going to be. You could have a lot of different things happen coming down the pipe. And I don't know about you, but I want to avoid everything I can. So questions? Yes. And you're welcome to leave. I'm just going to do Q&A. How do you find that out for a blood test? Yes. Yes. So I will do it now. So I had mine originally done as, done as serum because serum was way more effective than blood tests, but they've come a long way and now the blood tests are a lot more accurate. But it used to not be the blood tests were just not accurate. They might uh, say how much estrogen you have or testosterone, but they wouldn't tell you how much was free. Well, you only need to know what's free because if it can't, if it's not active, it doesn't matter. It's like if you have 50 pairs of shoes in your closet, but you can only wear three of them that fit, what good does it do? So I wanted more, way more accurate. So originally, I had all mine done with saliva, um, but now the blood tests are really more accurate. So they can tell you exactly what your levels are. You can tell by your skin. You can tell by your skin a lot, by how you feel, your energy. Yes? How much does the blood take to the You know, my, my Medicare is always paid for it. So um, I'm, I really don't know. I mean, it just pays it well. Well, I have Medicare and I have supplemental. So the only problem with that is you never know who pays always what. You know, I mean, I just always come out with it paying for it um, because I don't have deductibles. I'm not really sure. Does anybody know? Do any of you nurses know? Do you have any idea? Well, if you don't have insurance and you don't have coverage, it, it could be expensive. Yeah. It could be like uh, $400 for a day, a whole complement. Actually, how do you get the insurance to pay for it? Well, I'll tell you, let me give you a source without insurance. Life Extension. Write that down. Life Extension, twice a year, does incredible lab work, and they are a phenomenal company. It's $199. Not only can you get all your hormones, you can get your thyroid, you can get your cortisol. I mean, you can get the whole enchilada, a big, huge thing done um, while you're um, get $199 twice a year, which is wonderful for people. Okay, is that your primary care physician? It is. It is. And then I just go to, I only go to Greta for any of my female things. I go to, but now I go to her for everything because I, I, I just have a good relationship with her. And she doesn't give me a hassle. He doesn't either, but a lot of physicians will give you a hassle. Oh, you know, that's not really that important. Don't take my word for it. Check out your anatomy and physiology. Nurses are in here. They'll tell you. It's absolutely true. So yes? All natural hormone replacement therapy is not the same as bioidentical. Tremor is called natural. I had, I had a gynecologist tell me, I do natural. I do tremor. I'm like... And this was at a huge seminar. We had about 8,000 people. And I was the token health person. Mm -hmm. And so he was talking about, you know, primary is natural. And so, you know, I raised my hand and I know he's going, oh, I'm like, it is natural. I assume you have four legs, a tail, and a mane. <laughs> it's not natural for you, but it is natural. So natural is a word that's, I don't like the word natural because natural can mean it's vague. There's no clarification. You want bioidentical, meaning whatever they're putting in your body, would you not want it to be identical to what your own body makes? That's why you have no side effects if their amount's right and it's bioidentical. Natural, I don't know where it's coming from. Do you know where the bioidentical comes from? Yes, usually it comes from plants and then they create it in the lab so it's bio. And it's very highly regulated. Very highly regulated. A pellets is something new. Um, I tried the pellets. In fact, this time I have the pellet um, because I gave them the percentage of what I wanted for everything. She's like, Linda, nobody comes in here and tells me what percentage they want. You know, because I said, I want, you know, looking at my test, I want this, 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 this. And she agreed with me. That this just wasn't quite as, um, wasn't quite as usual. As, as, and that's what I like about credit is she really helps you with your numbers and gets you what you want. What she's talking about with a pellet is that, um, I'll tell you the plus and the minus. The plus, you never have to remember whether you've taken it or not because it's put in your glutes, 
So it's put in your fanny, it does not hurt. Uh, not like a shot, oh my gosh, no. It's, you feel a little pressure, and then you have a patch on it for about four days and you cannot do physical activity because your muscles could push it back out. So for four days, you kind of have to take it easy and it lasts for six months and it's very slowly released. I researched it and I, I like the system that does slowly release it. However, I would never do that alone without my progesterone because there's no way your body can try, titrate that. You know, if you, you're still gonna have up and downs in your own, own hormones. So stress is what really, really, and, and stress of course creates more cortisol. Where do you get cortisol from? Progesterone. So if you're under stress, guess what? Let's pretend I'm, I'm even here, right? And I'm good and I'm balanced. And then like when my daughter died, guess what? My cortisol level went through the roof. So now my progesterone's down here because that's what's making it. Okay, it hasn't come back up yet. So by supplementing with the progesterone, if I have a, a lot of pressure or a lot of stress, I just keep myself more even, which is what I want. Yes? Well, um, why, uh, why is this so important? Because my doctor never mentions anything. Oh, no, no. So why, so why, uh, why won't he mention it? Because that's not what they're taught in school. Well, they only tell you that your hormones are important if you're young and you're going to conceive and you're going to have a pregnancy. If that's true, then why is it that your body was literally built and created to keep those hormones going all the way until you die? They were. They were meant to keep. Now, you're going to have them much higher when you're in puberty. They're going to lower some when you go into menopause, but they are not supposed to drop into the toilet. But it's the environment. And they do not study what environmental issues do to our body. And they do a whole lot. We live in a world of chemicals. As well, I ask my doctor then to uh, check my hormone levels? Yeah, you can. He'll probably laugh at you if he doesn't do bio so you just have to decide, you know, what you want to do with that. Um, you can still keep your doctor, and you can go to somebody else who, I won't go to anybody who doesn't specialize in hormone replacement therapy, because I want somebody who really knows what they're talking about and what they're doing. And you can do that. I have a couple people that I've recommended to Greta. They still go, you know, keep their doctor, but for their hormones, they go to her because she knows what she's doing. She's really good, and she's had a lot of advanced studying. I know because I have quizzed her of the yin yang of one side and down the other. So, and you'll have to go to her. There's other people who do specialize in bioidentical hormones. Anything you ever read about anti aging, trust me, you're going to hear about hormones. You really are. It's what, like I said, it's what keeps me feeling young. It helps me with energy. Yes, my beamer is huge with that. But you know, nothing is a one all everything. You, you have to eat really well. You all know that. You have to be physically active. You know, you, it, life is to keep your body going. It's not a, I wish it were. It would be easy, but it is not a one thing that's going to help. It's a multitude. Has, how many times does your doctor talk to you about your nutrition? You should eat healthy. That's what you'll hear, maybe. So how, how many hours do they get in med school on nutrition? Does they know? On a three. It's an optional. I read somewhere it was like three hours. It's an optional three. Yeah, it's very interesting because it's everything. It's everything. 85% of all disease can be avoided. You have the power to do that. 15% is out of your control, but you have 85% on your lifestyle. Seriously. I wish I'd known that 30 years ago. I would have made some changes. Any other questions? I can tell you're all thinking I'm really radical. I need to probably stop. <laughs> You can just take a picture with your phone. I, and you know, Amazon Prime is pretty weird. I can I ordered it on Sunday, and I swear a drone drops it in my house on Monday. How do they do that? Doesn't that like spook you sometimes? You order on a Sunday afternoon, and it's bam on, on Monday, and it's it's there. Yeah, and if of course if it's Prime, then you don't. Um, and you want to start out slow, and then you know how do you know you use too much? Well, first of all, you should just be using one or two pumps. Uh, unless you have some real issues. And if you have issues, you use more. If you get sleepy, you're, you're using too much. Your body can't metabolize it. So 
You're welcome to come up and get brochures. I'm at the Red Car. Um, just let her know I sent you so she knows I'm doing the seminar. And uh, any other questions? I'll stay up here if you've got quiet private questions. Yeah.